Linear probing is one of the simplest and the most intuitive ways of handling hash table collisions and it is based on a technique called open addressing. In this video, the fourth of this hash table internal series, we take a detailed look into linear probing, understand what it is, how hash table operations happen with linear probing, learn why it is so simple yet so efficient and conclude with looking at two challenges that come with adopting it. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focused group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Greek buzzes live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course, which you see on the left side. And the second one is the recorded course, which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks. While the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So conflicts are inevitable as we are trying to map a large range of application keys into a smaller hash table. In the previous video, we looked at what open addressing is and how it tries to resolve conflicts in hash table while accommodating all the keys that come in. There are multiple ways of implementing the probing function and one of them is linear probing which we will take a detailed look today. Right? So just to reiterate what is a probing function. First of all, what is open addressing? Open addressing tries to solve this problem that whenever there is a collision in the hash table, it tries to find an available slot from the hash table itself. It does not use any auxiliary data structure like a linked list or a tree. It is trying to utilize the space of the hash table as much as it can, right? Without using an auxiliary data structure. And probing function, it is it tries to place the key. It tries to basically find the next available slot. It basically a good probing function generates a sequence uh, of permutation of all the indexes of your hash table. And we try each one of them one by one. And then the first available slot we find, we try to place it. Right? So every single technique that falls under open addressing is just about defining this probing function. Right? Today, when we look at linear probing, we'll see what a probing function for linear probing exactly looks like. <clears throat> so the idea of linear probing is extremely simple. What it does is it says that if I face a collision, let's say if I'm facing a collision at index three, right? And I'm trying to insert a particular key, the hash function, when I passed it, it gave me the index three. Right. So I'm going to the index three, trying to check if it is occupied or not. If it is not, not occupied, I'll insert it. Right. So if let's say this index three is occupied by some key, then what we would do is we would go to the image at right and see if index four is available. If four is not available, we'll go to five and then six. And then eventually let's say we go to seven, which is available. So our key gets inserted into index seven. Right. This is linear probing. And mathematically, it can be very simply written as my probing function is a function of key and an attempt i. It is not an index, it is an attempt. So 
my probing function h of uh, my uh, probing function k comma i is equal to h of k as in hash of the key k plus i mod m right so every attempt it starts from 0 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth it very beautifully fits one after another so whatever the hash index is it's not that everyone would start at 3 like the keys would be hashed at random locations but if that is occupied we would move to the right to find the first available slot right and now what happens when we go to the extreme right we circle back to index 0 and resume our lookup and like always open addressing has this problem where if you have filled all the slots of your hash table then you cannot insert any more keys and, and obviously that limitation holds with open addressing in general but this is the idea of linear probing it's extremely simple to implement right now let's quickly take a look into how hash table operations work with linear probing so adding a key let's say i have key k1 k2 uh, i have key k1 k2 and k3 all collided at index 2 so when i pass k1 k2 and k3 all of them the hash function spits out 2 right so all of them are trying to get inserted into uh, my hash table at index 2 k1 got inserted at index 2 because uh, the index 2 was open was empty then i tried to insert k3 k2 was empty then it moved to 1 to the right so then k3 got placed at 3 then k2 came in k2 got placed at 4 now when i'm trying to insert k4 it will get index to 2 2 is filled it will go to 3 3 is filled it will go to 4 4 is filled it will go to 5 5 is empty so k4 is slotted at 5 this is a linear lookup that you are making one after another to see the first available slot and put it there. Right? Now, let's take a look at another operation, key lookup. How does key lookup look like? So, what we do is we invoke the probing function, we pass the key through the hash function and when we pass the key through the hash function, we get a slot. Right? We get an index. We go to that index and check if the key is there. If the key is there, we return. If the key is not there, we start iterating from that one by one until we find the key. If we find the key, well and good, we return. Fine. Let's say during the traversal, if we encounter an empty slot, if I encounter an empty slot, it means that there would not be any key that has collided on that address. Like the key that you are looking for has not collided on that, is not yet present in the hash table. Otherwise, there would not have been an empty slot. Fine. So, if you discover or if you encounter an empty slot while traversing, you have to stop the iteration, right? Otherwise, unless you find any key, you would continue iterating through the array to find the key of your interest. And eventually you will find it if it is there in the hash table, right? This is how key lookups work, right? And obviously you would have foreseen it. The worst case of this is you are iterating the entire hash table, the entire big range of array in case every single slot is filled you will be iterating through the entire hash table to look up for a key right and that is a problem that is the worst case of this implementation but in most cases your hash table is large enough and you would have far far empty slots in between and that would you don't need to iterate the entire table whatsoever you would encounter an empty slot much before you iterate the entire table right but that is the worst case that you should be aware of right now the final operation of your hash table deleting a key Deleting a key has to be a soft delete. Previous video we discussed why soft deletes are important for open addressing. Here also we have to do soft delete because if you are not doing soft delete, if we do hard delete, what would happen is it would create an empty slot. So it would never move forward for the collided key of that same, for the same index. So that is where you'd always need to do, uh, you'd always need to do soft delete. So whenever a key is there that needs to be removed or that needs to be deleted from the hash table, and you are using linear probing, you would start from that index, move forward until you locate the key and soft delete that key, right? So that you, while looking up, you can continue your iteration moving forward, right? This is how the three operations, the three key operations of a hash table would look like with linear probing, right? Now let's take a look at how, why linear probing is so fast. Simple, we all agree, it's like going through the hash and then moving forward, 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 forward. It's really simple. But why is it so fast, right? Now, it's fast, would you think, hey, I'm linearly traversing the array, isn't it slow? You think that it is slow, but the best part here is, 
because you are linear because you are linearly traversing through the array you are using locality of reference now what happens going into operating system details right but when you are accessing any memory location in your ram in your main memory when you are trying to locate uh, whenever you are trying to access any location when a system call goes to fetch that particular location what would happen a your operating system works at a block level it might be a 4kb block like your disk typically has 4kb block let's say it's 1kb block for your ram it takes that 1kb block and puts it into cpu cache right so because the value is accessed by what by accessed by your cpu so when the request goes to access a ram or a particular location in the ram a block is read from the ram and it is cached on the cpu right so now what happens when you are traversing through the array one after another you are you might already be hitting the cache the cpu cache you might not even have to go to the main memory to read it because you are constantly iterating one after another now let's say i'll give a i'll give a very concrete example let's say you were iterating on the array a and your hash function spitted out two for a particular key so when you are accessed a of 2 right a of 2 3 4 and 5 all four might be brought up in the cpu cache right now let's say you saw collision at 2 you are moving to 3 when it is trying to access a of 3 it is already there in the cpu cache it would not have to do a it would not have to do a memory lookup it can, will already have the data in the cpu cache so it would be very fast in iterating that is where linear probing very beautifully exploits the locality of reference the your os your cpu your hardware is anyway caching those things and it is very beautifully leveraging it which is where linear probing gives a very solid performance when it comes to handling collision keys right and looking up them and deleting them it's really fast right now you'll think and there is a one there is one very strong claim which says that linear probing gives a constant time performance for average cases it gives constant time performance it's a very solid like it's a big claim because you see that the worst case is always moving forward 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 iterating through the entire day why how can it even say that it would give a constant time performance because because in an average case there would be far fewer collisions you would use a hash function that is random enough that is distributed across your entire space right so in most cases the collisions would be far fewer which means that let's say on an average per slot there are five collisions right when you are accessing one of the key you are anyway bringing all of them in a cpu cache so when you are iterating it is literally doing a cpu lookup you don't even have to go to your ram to access it right which is why on an average it gives you constant time performance it's a big claim but that's how and that's how hash functions are supposed to work you cannot expect every every single one of them colliding to the same place right but the worst case is still painful when entire hash table is filled and you have to iterate all of them right that is there but average case you should not be even worrying about it gives you constant time performance and there is a paper that proves it's give you it gives you constant time performance wikipedia page reference section basically check that out if you wish how they have proven it right now we'll conclude the final part challenges with linear probing obviously grass is not always green challenges with linear probing challenge number one a bad hash function would make linear probing very inefficient right because it would have to do like let's say assume that a bad hash function for example every single key is hashing on to this same value so let's say if you have a hash table of size 8 every single one of them is hashing to the same location too so then eventually your hash table will fill out and because it's a poor hash function you would always have to do linear lookup across the table so a bad hash function would ruin your linear probing right that is where it is very important to use a good hash function which nearly uniformly distributes the hash space or the hash output across your entire range right that is really important which is why with linear probing uh, murmur hash is very much preferred because it's really very random like it looks near uniform the way it distributes it it's beautiful right so that's where linear probing has 
its disadvantage that it relies heavily like a poor hash function will ruin the entire experience right so that is where picking a good hash function is very important second limitation is really important it's really fun linear probing suffers from clustered collisions what do i mean by that so for example what would happen over here is let's say i have key k1 k2 and k3 right k1 hashes to index 2 k2 hashes at index 2 k3 hashes to index 3 right so what would happen if i'm trying to insert k1 it would go to index 2 the slot is empty k1 sits there right k2 also hashes to index 2 k2 will go to index 2 we'll see the slot is occupied it would go to index 3 and sit k3 hashes to index 3 it would say array but index 3 is already occupied by k2 so it will go to k4 so here you see you are forming a clustered collision where because of one because of a prior key spilling over or having having large number uh, having collisions it is affecting the key sitting nearby right so you had a collision on k2 so then k3 also got impacted because k1 and k2 occupied the slot of k3 right so this is where you see a lot of clusters being formed of collided keys which are impacting each other some or the other way right plus a bad function if it tries or if it uh, places or if it generates localized hashes for example if you're having a range from 0 to 100 but your hash function is creating or is basically producing values which is really clustered in the range of let's say 10 to 20 right so then all the keys are put into this same 10 to 20 slot and then they are spill and they are actually spill over across the table then what would happen is you are unnecessarily seeing large number of collisions in a small space and then unnecessarily you have to do linear lookup so that is where again uniform hash function would make all the difference where it would you almost nearly uniformly distributes your key across the entire hash table right so just to reiterate on the clustered collision first is when in a smaller space of keys or a smaller range where a lot of keys get collided or they get hashed you would have to do spillover and it would be displacing the other keys now when i say displacing it does not mean it would move the other keys but like in this example k3 would have been indexed at location 3 but because k2 already held index 3 it would the k3 had to move to 4 and this is what is catastrophic right so that is where if your hash function is creating a clustered is, is generating a clustered output somewhere in the range like it's occur although you have a big range but if your hash function is only creating values in in clusters and which is very common to see with poor hash functions then you are seeing a lot of clustered collisions and then eventually your problem transfers into a linear lookup problem rather than a hash table lookup problem right this is a big problem with linear hashing. That is why, again, a good uniform hash function is very important. Right? Otherwise, it would you are you are just converting your hash table into a linear lookup, which is very poor. Right? Okay, that's it. That's it about uh, linear lookups. The idea was to go in depth of linear probing. Linear, no, not not about linear lookup, but about linear probing. The idea was to go in depth about linear probing, help you understand the challenges and the advantages and why it is so fast, why as it leverages CPU cache and whatnot. I hope you learned something new. Uh, this was the fourth video in this hash, hash table internal series. I'm planning to create much more. So if you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.